In this tutorial, we're going to install and set up Google Site Kit and a bunch of its services because it's now out of beta. So the installation should be really smooth and it should work perfectly out of the box. We'll see in this tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. I do try to answer all of them and like this video if you like it. My name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab, where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. If you like that kind of stuff, please make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And we're getting started on this video right now. Search Engine Journal just reported a few days ago that Google Site Kit is out of beta. So I think it's time for me to install it and see how it works on my website. And then you guys can see if you want to install it on yours as well. So we need to go to a new browser, a new tab, and go to Site Kit dot with google.com you can read all about it on this page or you can click on install site kit right here and it's now an official plugin in the wordpress repository so you can install it through here previously you had to install it right through their website and download it here which you can still do or now you can go on the website go to plugins and add new search for site kit two words here it is right here only 20,000 active installs this will likely increase because it's brand new into the repository. Click on install now whenever you're ready and then click on activate. If you have a live site, it's a good idea to back up your site before you install new plugins. I've got an automated backup scheduled on my site. If you want to learn how to do that, click the tutorial link card above or the description down below. I'll show you how to make automatic backups to your site. Now that it's downloaded and activated, we can click on start setup. Just a few clicks, no real coding required. You do have to copy and paste some code, but you don't have to code anything yourself. Click on sign in with Google. If you don't have a Gmail account, you'll be prompted to create one here. You don't have to use Gmail or anything. You just need the account to be able to connect to Google services. So I'm going to choose this one right here. And then click on allow. Because if we don't allow it, site kit won't work. But we do have to allow it on. And a bunch of data does go to Google. Uh, hopefully it's anonymous. Who knows? But Google knows more about me than I probably do anyway. Because I use a lot of their services. Now we verified ownership of WPLearnLab.com. We want to allow Google to access data, which is funny because it's Google's data. Not, not really Google's, but it's on Google servers anyway. So we're allowing Google to access its own data. I guess that's important to do it that way. Okay, so now we have Search Console connected. Immediately, we have some data appearing. I have not paused this video. You can check the timestamp on the top right. I've not paused it, and data is already showing up. And all we've connected so far to Google Search Console. So let's now click on Connect Service under AdSense, or we can go to Settings on the top right here. We have a new, or top left, a new Site Kit option here. Connect more services. We see them all here. These are grayed out. They won't be grayed out once we add, I think maybe Analytics. Once we add Analytics, these will be available. I'm going to click on Setup Analytics, and it's kind of the same process. There's no real coding, maybe some copying and pasting. You want to click on the Gmail account that has your Analytics account. Otherwise, it can't access analytics. Click on allow four times this time. Click on allow a fifth time. Connecting the service. This one's taking a little longer than Search Console. And now we have to pick the website we want to choose from. It's already pre-chosen this one, which I think is the correct one. Um, actually, I used the web spam filtered. There's actually a trick you can use in Google Analytics that filters out web spam in your data. I've made a video for that, but it might be a useful one to create. Anyway, just choose the account property and view, and then click on configure analytics. And we'll see how long this takes to pull in data. Looks like it's about as fast as the search console was because there's data here already. And on the top left, we just had a analytics tab added with the search console one which shows Search Console information. And now we have Analytics, which shows Analytics information. And this is great for clients because they don't have to log into a bunch of different services. They can see all this data right in their dashboard. So if they're active clients who like to create content and grow their traffic and things, it's great to have SiteKit right on their websites. And let's go back to Settings and then go to Connect More Services. And now Tag Manager and Optimize are active. I'm not going to install them right now because I think with Tag Manager, I currently have a Tag Manager plugin on my site because I do use Tag Manager on my site. And I might have to somehow navigate replacing that plugin. Might not be a seamless process. In that case, there's some pretty important functions I have in Tag Manager. So I'm not going to touch this one just yet. But if I do do this and I run into problems, I'll make a video on the problems. This Hopefully you can avoid those problems if you use Tag Manager. 
I'm going to connect PageSpeed Insights though. Let's set that up. And that was it. I just clicked it and now it's online. And at the very bottom we have our speed. Let's see if I have my speed plugin turned on. Sometimes I turn it off for various tutorials I make. WP Rocket is currently turned off. So this speed that it pulls up is not going to be great. So we get a 1 and 32. So that's not awesome. That's because I have my speed plugins turned off. Let's see if I turn that on. Let's activate this. See if I can refresh that speed. Get it to be a little bit better than very slow. Uh, there's no refresh option. Refresh this page. Anyway, this will be retested. Now that I have my speed plugin turned on again, it should be a lot better in those results. Let's go to settings again and connect more services. Let's just try connecting AdSense. I don't use it on my site, but maybe we can see if it allows you to put ads where you want to or if it auto places ads. If it auto places them, I wouldn't recommend using it because it's always better to put ads where you think they should go or it doesn't destroy user experience. Although Google is aware of user experience, they find it very important, so I'm not quite sure how that would work, but we're connecting it. Let's see what happens. Here it says SiteKit will place AdSense code on every page across your site. This means Google will automatically place ads in all the best places. So it does automatically put them wherever it feels like. I don't want to do that. I'm going to click on cancel. I prefer to put the code where it's needed, where I think it's important. And AdSense is not connected because I cancel it. You decide if you want to add it to every single page on your site because it'll do that automatically for you. It definitely saves a lot of time. If you have a lot of pages, it can be quite painful to add code to every page that you want it on. So that could be a great option for you. Optimize is for A-B split testing and things like that, testing the design of your site. I'm not going to add that because I don't use that very much, but I'm planning some tutorials for this. Tag Manager, like I said, I'm not going to add that in case something goes wrong. Under Admin Settings, we can choose to allow tracking or not. This was a checkbox we saw at the very beginning of this tutorial as well. You can choose to share anonymous usage statistics with Google to hopefully make the plugin better. And that's really all there is to this plugin. Now, all you do is you go to the dashboard or Search Console tab or AdSense or Analytics, and you see data. And if we go to the dashboard, we have a site kit panel as well. Here it is. I'm just going to move that up to the top. Now you get all kinds of data right in your site kit, or sorry, right in your WordPress dashboard, or your clients can get data right in the WordPress dashboard, and that is often quite useful. So that's site kit in a nutshell. You can integrate a lot of Google services into your site, which is awesome. And it's pretty useful, especially for client sites. If you have a lot of clients that would benefit from this information and you don't want them logging into their own analytics or your analytics to get that data. And site gets out of beta. I didn't run into any issues with this setup, so you should be able to have a pretty smooth setup as well. So that's how Google Site Kit works. I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, please make sure you click subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss any future videos. And then check out this video up here where I show you how to speed up a website. As you saw, my website is quite slow without optimization. Check out this video up here to see how to make it a whole lot faster. And then check out this video down here, which shows you how to keep your website secure. Google Site Kit offers a lot. It does not offer security. So check that out down here and make sure your website's secure. Until next time, my name is Bjorn Allpass from WP Learning Lab. Keep crushing it and I will see you in the next video.